Hi, I'm Nicola Roberts and I've just arrived in Birmingham, just got off the train. I'm here to meet a young lady called Nabila. I'm shooting a Radio 1 documentary about modest dressing and I'm really looking forward to the day. I'm really intrigued to find out more about modest fashion, how young Muslim women are embracing it, what part their religion plays, who is part of this movement, why are they choosing to dress like this, and how do hijabis adapt mainstream high street trends for modest fashion? A hijabi is someone who chooses to cover their head in public. This is my journey through modest fashion. Nabila, also known as Nabila B on social media, is a young Muslim hijabi vlogger. Modest dressing, it doesn't mean just wearing like, you know, probably what you see on TV, a black abaya, that's the long black dresses. Okay. Modest fashion is about dressing how you want, like what you're comfortable in, like covering yourself. So it doesn't really reveal your figure. Yeah. But at the same time, it doesn't have to be bulky and ugly. It can be really nice. She has been vlogging for five years and has over 120,000 subscribers and she has amassed a whopping 16.5 million views on YouTube. She is one of the young Muslim women who are at the forefront of the hijabi modest fashion scene and is a role model to many young Muslim women. You mentioned colour. Yeah. So you use colour to express your personality? Yeah, definitely. Because there's no rules about colour, so okay. you can do whatever you want. That's like a um, loophole? Yeah. <laughs> Next, we're off to the Custard Factory in Birmingham to meet some of Nabila's vlogger hijabi friends and find out about their different styles and what modest fashion means to them. So, I'm super excited that Nabila's brought all of you here today. Can you just talk me through your individual styles? Even looking at it right now, quite it's different. It gets quite yeah. different. I yeah. see modesty as like abayas and long skirts and stuff. Okay. But I think every Muslim individual sees modesty as different okay. yeah. and everyone has their own yeah. style and taste to it. Do you think because everybody sees it different is where that's the reason why there's so many different opinions yeah, towards yeah, it. Yeah, definitely, and different judgments. Yeah. And you get, yeah, different comments. It's a really, it's a really personal thing. It's what has many different meanings. Different so. interpretations, I yeah, guess, yeah. Because where I, I wear trousers, some mm -hmm. people might think that's not modest. They would think that um, abayas, which is the long dress, mm -hmm. is a modest Is the correct dress. way. Yeah. Then you've got yeah. those other people who are just like, oh my God, you're wearing pink. <gasps> yeah. Like yeah. Bright yeah. Like yeah. Sometimes but, they um, think being... Um, too out being there. bright is not good because it's attention. What would you say in your defence towards that? I think um, in the, being in obviously in the, in the West where we are, everyone you know we all wear different colours. Mm -hmm. If it was someone like you know Saudi Arabia where they yeah. all wear black, then that would be th something different. Yeah. I wouldn't go around wearing a pink scarf. Being in the UK, I think um, different colours you know it's fine because everyone is in different colours. Nabila's friends were so cool. They all have very unique personalities and fashion sense, and as a result, interpret modest fashion based on their individual tastes. Some choose to wear the hijab and normal Western clothes, and others wore more traditional clothes like an abaya, which is a loose fit and full length robe. So after my brief induction into modest fashion, Nabila and I are off to the high street to shop for each other. Can I find an outfit for her based on her religious requirements but still keeping it fashionable and something she would wear? And can she find an outfit for me? I want to see how challenging it is for modest dresses to find suitable clothing on a typical high street. I never normally have to think beyond my personal clothing taste, so I'm interested to see how I confuse modesty and fashion together. So we're here today in a London high street store for our shopping challenge, and we have to shop for each other. We've got a bunch of money here, and we're gonna go and pick a few outfits for each other. Are you scared? I'm a bit nervous, how about you? I feel like after yesterday, I learned so much. Yeah. From you and all the girls that I feel more prepared. I think there's a lot of selection here, so it's gonna be a bit of a challenge finding an outfit for you. Should we give each other some tips at least? As long as it covers me yeah. up to my uh, wrists. wrists and my ankles. Okay. And it's not too tight, but it doesn't have to be too loose either. Okay. So just quite, doesn't show my figure too much. What about colours and stuff? I love colour. I don't really like prints that are too girly. Yeah. Too much information. I like bold things, simple, yeah. classic cuts. Okay, that has helped me a lot Yeah, now. And I don't that. mind like clashing colours. I like simple things. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So here's half for you. Good luck. You too. Okay, here we go. Let's see what we can find for Nabila with all of her 
dress requirements. This jacket's cute, but I think it might be a bit edgy. Wonder if she ever picks anything up and feels like she really likes it, but she just knows that it wouldn't be acceptable. That must be hard. See, these are more like scarves to go around the neck rather than scarves that you would wear on the head. If I pick this scarf out, she's just going to laugh at me because it's not a head scarf, it's just basically a wraparound scarf. I actually don't think there's any scarves here that she could wear. This is actually harder than what I thought it was going to be. What am I thinking? I'm going into actual struggle mode. I really like this jacket. It's really simple, I like these ones, and I like these ones. I'm just slightly conscious because yesterday a couple of the girls said that trousers wasn't necessarily allowed. I've reached a place where I have accepted defeat, managed to find something. It took me so much longer than what I thought it was going to take. And I just have to just give it to her now and hope she likes it. What about the modest fashion designers? How do they approach their work? Nabila and I went to see Barges Chohan, one of the few modest high-end designers in the UK. She trained at the prestigious London College of Fashion, Central St. Martins, and interned for Vivian Westwood before launching her own high-end Barges collection. I wonder how she tackles the concept of creating high-end designer fashion whilst catering for a modest market. For me, we're always working around parameters, so you have got these boundaries that you have to work. You can't design sleeveless clothes, you have to have a layer on top, but I try to design clothes that women, girls, they feel cool in the summer, and that was a huge issue being raised in the UK. When you go outside in the summer, you don't really know what to wear. Mm. Even maxi dresses, it's like you have to put, you know, something on top, and it is still a big problem with the high street market. So these trousers, they're just normal trousers in the front, but at the back, I put a layer for a skirt, so that you don't show the shape of your bottom. And it's these little things that could make a lot of difference. So you feel like a Western High Street store wouldn't scream about the fact that they have a Muslim line because they don't want to alienate the yeah. Western shoppers? Absolutely. How do you feel about that? The irony is when I launched the label, it was kind of targeting a kind of predominantly Muslim market. And I thought Middle East affluent market. But really, the people who are buying my clothes are Western women and not even Muslim women. Majority of my buyers are actually white middle class ladies. Okay. And they don't really say modest, they say elegant. There's not a black and white rule to modest, modest dressing? As long as you don't reveal the shape of your body, modesty is not just about what you wear, it's how you carry yourself. Mm -hmm. You could be top to bottom dressed up, but you could be very immodest. That's what you keep saying. Yeah, yeah. And that's I what I've been saying. And I believe that. The way you speak, the way you carry yourself, the way you conduct your life is very, very important. And that is part of your modesty. I wanted to speak to an Islamic scholar to find out what Islam says about modest fashion and where does Nabila fit in. We went to see Fatima Barkatullah, an Islamic scholar at the East London Mosque in Whitechapel. What do you think of Nabila's outfit today? I appreciate that you know, every person is on a journey. But I feel that the hijab and for young people is a journey. So I don't think it's my uh, role to kind of judge, you know, Nabila or anyone, anyone at all. What I would say is that we should research, we should look into it in order to be clear on what God wants of us, you know, because at the end of the day, we want to please God as Muslims. So what do you think of the rise of the so-called modest fashion vloggers? I think there is a whole generation of young Muslims growing up under a lot of pressure. Um, and there are girls who, it's just natural for them to want to express themselves. The positive side to what the vloggers are doing is helping Muslim girls to actually take that step, you know, to start wearing the hijab and feel confident doing so. Yeah. Where I think that the vloggers need to be careful is the hijab is an act of worship. Allah has given us certain guidelines for it. So I think there's a huge responsibility there, you know, not to kind of water it down or to yeah. change it because the hijab isn't just a headdress. It's not just a, you know, a decoration or an accessory. When you put yourself out there as a vlogger, what you're doing is you're making yourself a role model and people take you as a role model. So with that comes huge responsibility. 
Yeah. So it's now my turn to choose an outfit for Nicola. I'm really excited, but I'm really, really nervous. I don't know what to choose, but she did say she doesn't like too much girly prints and she likes more um, elegant silhouettes. So I'm going to look for that. I did notice from her Instagram, I did a bit of research beforehand. She likes quite long dresses as well. I definitely feel more under pressure of who Nicola is and like dressing a celebrity rather than an everyday person. I don't know, this is so hard. This is really nice actually. So this is um, a blue trench. I quite like that, but no, I don't know. This is a really cute dress. I feel like I could see her wearing it. The thing is, I really like this, but then I'm like, how would it look on her? Because she does have red hair, so... This is maybe something she'd wear. These are too florally, too girly. This is much harder than I thought it would be. She would definitely not like that. It was quite difficult, much more difficult than I thought it would be. So I'm here with Nicola and we did our shopping. We did our little bit. I'm really excited. How did you find it? Really hard. I was freaking out at numerous <laughs> points. Really? Oh. Yeah. The things that I found really hard was I would pick something out that I loved and then I'd be restricted with the fact that it was sleeveless, so I'd have yeah. to pick something to go on top. I didn't like anything that went on top. Yeah, I got the outfit together, and then it was like, oh, I don't want to leave it like that, it's a little plain. I want to okay. add something to it, a bit more. And then everything was floral, mm. and I know you, you said you were like, you didn't want too much florals, yeah. you didn't want it to be girly, and then that was like 75% of the shop was just out. Yeah. Yeah. But I was really excited about what you chose for me, so okay, me here you go. Let's go. Already looking at the stuff here, I'm loving the shoes. I really love the shoes. This is definitely something I would pick out. Um, I'm not, not sure about the bag yet because I haven't seen the outfit. Okay, I'm looking at the colours. Mm, okay, I'm quite liking it. I like the trousers. I actually do like the trousers. Okay, let me just check out the top. Okay, mm, I see why she chose this top the long sleeves and stuff and then oh I quite like this okay yeah uh, not too keen on the cardigan I'm sorry but I I don't know this is not really something I would wear maybe if I was on holiday um, I really like the trousers and the shoes though the bag is quite nice too so. yeah. okay let's see what she's got here oh I really like that little bag that's really cute that's nice. How funny that she's picked the jacket out that I loved. I was almost going to pick this out for her. Okay. That's good. I would wear that. I don't know if I would wear the shirt or not. It might be a bit flimsy. But the skirt is a definite winner. Like, that is really cute. And it's pretty, but it's also really cool at the same time. I love the colour. So, are they cute? I actually do have a pair of nude flats at home, so they're really sweet. That's something I would wear. I think she's done really well. Yeah, I'm happy. I feel like I'm now equipped with a whole world of knowledge that I just didn't, I just didn't have before. And I love learning things. I love learning how different people live and people's different way of lives. So this to me has been something that um, I found really interesting. She's really open-minded about everything and she kind of, once we explained it to her, she really understood it um, and um, it was loads of fun and she kind of now gets how difficult it is for us to go shopping. My favourite thing I've taken away from this experience would be meeting Nabila and all of her friends up in Birmingham. We had a lovely afternoon and I just thought they were the coolest group of girls, real young pioneers for Muslim women and I felt like I totally wanted to be in their little crew. The main piece of fashion that they wear that I 
actually love is the hijab and I love the way they basically use the headscarf to complement how they look and it's like a real skill like I practice how to blow dry hair and they sit in front of the mirror for hours and practice how to do their hijabs and I said to Nabila some days I have really bad hair days and she said yeah some days I have really bad hijab days.